Hey everybody, it's Tim Miller from The Bulwark. Uh, there was an absolutely disgusting display in Trump Tower just a little bit ago as Donald Trump held a press conference uh, where uh, he just shamed himself and the country uh, in his comments standing next to Volodymyr Zelensky, who has shown unbelievable courage in the face of a unrepentant attack from a hostile power in Russia. Um, uh, we this the press conference happened after I taped today's podcast, so I wanted to get back on with you and give you my initial reaction to it because it can't it can't wait. I mean, what Donald Trump did today just boggles the mind. Um, it is a display of somebody that is so megalomaniacal, uh, who has no interest in freedom and free people, who only cares about himself, um, uh, and uh, the degree to which um, this was. Uh, I guess you couldn't call it traitorous because, you know, he wasn't being traitorous to America, really, but uh, certainly just a complete abandonment of any um, stalwart commitment to our allies and to the forces of freedom throughout the world uh, from a Republican presidential nominee. It's just extremely disheartening. So I think we're going to have to watch the whole thing. Um, and uh, if you can't take it, you can just press that fast forward button down there and get back to my my recap on the back end. But it is important to watch. Um, and I think before we watch it, I, I should say that Zelensky has to do this. Zelensky has to do this. Zelensky is doing what is right for his people. And God forbid Donald Trump ever darken the door of the White House again. Uh, Zelensky is going to need to be able to do whatever he can to create the best environment for the Ukrainians. Um, Obviously, the best environment for the Ukrainians would happen if Kamala Harris is the next president, and, she, and he has a reliable ally who is not a Putin stooge in the White House. Um, but there's a chance that might not happen, and that's out of his hands, right? He can't not interfere in our elections. He would not. And so he has to, uh, as a foreign leader, try to, uh, you know, bait Trump, <laughs> try to use the same tools that Kamala Harris used in the debate, the same tools that other foreign leaders have used to you know, prey on his weaknesses and prey on his insecurities in a way that could maybe help his people down the line. And so I hold no ill will to Zelensky for doing this, uh, but I'm filled with contempt for Donald Trump uh, for the way that he handled it. So let's, let's watch the press conference together. What are your expectations from this meeting? What do you expect to hear from uh, Nothing. Uh, look, this is a meeting, and we have a big race going on right now. I guess 37 days left, and we're leading in the polls, and so we'll see how it all works out. Hopefully it'll work out, but if it does, we're going to work very much with both parties to try and get this settled and get it worked out. Uh, it has to end at some point. It has to end. He's gone through hell, and this country has gone through hell like few countries have ever, uh, like it's happened anywhere. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. It's a terrible situation. And I, I will say, I have had a great relationship. It was very honorable. I don't even know if you know this, but when they uh, did the impeachment hoax, it was a hoax, just a Democrat hoax, which we won. But one of the reasons we won it so easily is that when the president was asked, it was over a phone call with the president, and he said he could have grandstanded and played cute, but he didn't do that. He said, President Trump did absolutely nothing wrong. He said it loud and clear, and the impeachment hoax died right there. He could have said, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And I, don't, I never even told you this, to be honest, but he was, he was uh, like a piece of steel. He said, President Trump did nothing wrong. We had a very nice call. He congratulated me on his victory. He just won. Uh, and uh, I remember that. I remember that he could have played cute, and he didn't play cute. And so I appreciated that. So we have a very good relationship. And I also have a very good relationship, as you know, with President Putin. And I think uh, if we win, I think we're going to get it resolved very quickly. Very well. I really think we're going to get it resolved. I hope we have more good relations. We're going to have a whole lot of Yeah, you, but, you, you but you know, it takes two to tango, you know. And we will, uh, we're going to have a good meeting today. And I think the fact that we're even together today is a very good sign, and hopefully uh, we'll have a good victory because uh, the other side wins. I don't think you're going to have victories with anything, to be honest with you. So 
we're going to sit down and just discuss it. And uh, if we have a, a win, I think long before I, before January 20th, before I would take the presidency, it's January 20th. But long before that, I think that uh, we can work out something that's good for both sides. It's time. And, and by the way, the president knows that, too. He wants to get something done. He doesn't want to do this. And uh, so we look forward to having them. I mean, I look forward to being with him. But what I said is true. He was a, he was a piece of steel. He gave a very honest, straight answer. And that it, it really ended, essentially ended the impeachment hoax. And uh, I appreciated that. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Brad. So there were two things that really stand out there. Three, actually. Uh, two, two comments and, and one observation. Uh, the observation is just his body language is atrocious. I mean, he's just like hunched. He's unhappy. He doesn't look happy. He looks like he's sulking, pouting. This is not does not look like a man that's standing shoulder to shoulder with somebody who um, is br- fighting back a disgusting and heinous incursion on his country and, and who is fighting back against a monster that has kidnapped children and, and mass murdered people who did nothing except for try to try to exist. Um, it wasn't that. It was a slunched prep school smartass. Um, you know, just like a privileged Nepo baby slumping in his dad's suit. That's what Trump looked like. Then the language, the two things that stand out. Number one, that Trump's makes over over half of this press conference is dedicated to Trump saying that Zelensky did the right thing on impeachment one. Like, that's what this is about. And uh, given the life or death situation, given the geopolitical impacts, like what Trump is obsessed with is that Vladimir Zelensky did not throw him under the bus uh, on impeachment one where Donald Trump called and tried to pressure him uh, to investigate Joe Biden uh, and and said that they were going to, you know, limit the amount of weapons and and support that they were going to get unless he investigated Joe Biden. It wasn't Zelensky's job to get involved in that. Zelensky, again, he needs allies, right? Um, you, You don't put other countries' leaders in the position where they need to suck up to you and advance your political ends or else you will punish them. That's what Donald Trump did in impeachment one. And that's what he did again today. You know, Zelensky can't say, well, actually, you were a little over the line. He can't say that because he might need Donald Trump in the future, unfortunately. He doesn't want to be in a position where he might need Donald Trump, but that's just his reality. So I, I, the, the treatment of Zelensky, just this self, the, 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 the fact that solipsistic mindset of Donald Trump uh, is uh, just exactly the opposite of what you want in a leader. Exactly what you want in the, uh, 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 the opposite of what you want in a, in a friend, an ally. And it's sickening. And, 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 and it's all you want to talk about. Because he was exonerated in impeachment one. Sorry, bro. You got hit on impeachment two. And, uh, and then four different indictments. So, you know, sorry. Not, didn't, really, didn't really work out like you wanted um, then there is the comments about Putin. It's one time you see Zelensky look at him and kind of like make a little cut remark. But this idea that he has this good relationship with Putin and that they're all going to come to the table and cut a good deal, like, this is not a real estate transaction, all right? This is not a real, this is not a New York real estate transaction where it's like, oh, you know, we're going to screw over this guy and, you know, cut... Uh, the percent that they're going to get on the condo resale. I, and, and I know both counterparties. Uh, you know, this is not a name, imaging, and likeness deal for your fake watches. Like, this is about autonomy. This is about national sovereignty. This is about the life of the Ukrainian people, the freedom of the Ukrainian people, their security. It's about the children that have been taken. Like, Okay, there's a way to frame this and say, okay, yeah, if I get in there, I will do my best to come to a deal that respects Ukrainian sovereignty and land and right to life. 
and that acknowledges that, that Vladimir Putin was the aggressor and that Vladimir Putin can't be rewarded for his treachery, but we will still do what is possible to, to, to bring this to an end. Right? Like there's ways to talk about this that acknowledges who's good and who's bad. Right? Donald Trump is just like, I've got a good relationship with this guy. I've got a good relationship with this guy. Like it's Celebrity Apprentice. You know, I've got Gary Busey over here and I've got Mr. T over here. And, and they're angry at each other. And so we'll try to make up. No, it's like Putin invaded and slaughtered Zelensky's people. All right? If you still have a good relationship with him, ugh. But if you want to say, hey, I can keep it up an open line with him. We're go- I will work with Zelensky to try to compel the Russians to leave Ukraine, to leave Ukraine alone. Okay. Like there, like there are ways to talk about this. Um, that would recognize whose side you're on and, and, and recognize what is needed for this thing to actually come to a close, which is uh, uh, Russia backing down, right? But he, the way he's talking about it, it's kind of like, well, yeah, we'll do a little deal and we'll, you'll get a little bit of Crimea and you'll get a little bit of Kharkiv and... No. Um, it's sick... It is it is wrong. Donald Trump doesn't know right from wrong, so he can't recognize the moral valence in this situation. But um, I gotta say, uh, we just cannot have this man in the White House again. We cannot um, that type of treatment of allies and that type of coddling of autocratic monsters is just un-American, and we can't have it. All right. Um, we'll keep monitoring the news, obviously. You know where to find it when something happens. Right here on the Bulwark YouTube page. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. See you soon. Peace.